So I know when you first started looking at this video, you were thinking, Hold on, is this another YouTube tutorial? Nope, it's not. But what it is, it's my own new personal vlog and it's called Undeniably Nikki. And as you can guess, of course, people who don't know me, I'm Nikki. And I just want to start off by saying, welcome. Welcome to my vlog. I finally did it. So I have been thinking about doing this for a long time. I've been thinking about doing a vlog, I've been thinking about doing a podcast, and basically I just kept letting things get in my way and I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Um, procrastinating. I was doing a lot of procrastinating, which, by the way, do you know that procrastination can kill your dreams? Like, it can literally kill your dreams. So anyway, I was trying to do this vlog or a podcast that um, I wanted to do and I basically wanted it to call it Undeniably Nikki because I wanted to be literally just a podcast that is for me, um, about me, and just things that I love. So I like, for example, I love celebrity gossip. I love to talk about that. So on this vlog, I'm going to give my take on different things that's happening in celebrity gossip and entertainment but I also love like the biggest inspiration for me to me I'm always the most fulfilled when I can just inspire and motivate and support people I know it sounds a little crazy or maybe even cliche but it's the truth I feel my best when I am literally just able to inspire with my words or with just my love or with um, supporting, just supporting people, supporting their dreams, trying to like basically troubleshoot things with them. Um, but with that said, I noticed that I was doing a lot of supporting of other people's dreams and doing a lot of, um, you know, cheerleading for a lot of people, but I wasn't doing that for myself. I had uh, numerous friends, numerous people telling me for the longest time that I should start a blog. And I kept always having this excuse. I've always been like, oh, I'm too busy. I work so much, which you guys, I really do. I work a lot. I work like 10 to 12 hours a day. So it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but I had to actually have an aha moment. And I said to myself, I said, Nikki, like, what are you doing? Like, you feel your best when you can motivate and inspire people. So why don't you decide to you know do a vlog that's you that's undeniably you do a podcast that's you that's undeniably you and what's undeniably me is basically the things i talked about earlier along with you know loving celebrity gossip and loving what's talking about what's going on what's happening in the world and things like that so you know what i decided to piss not get off the pot i decided to piss not get off the pot wow and uh actually go full force, head first, run smack into the wall into trying to do this vlog. And basically, it's the first step into fulfilling my dreams. Now, I had a couple of technical difficulties today. For example, I bought like a mic. I bought like all these fancy little gadgets and stuff. I didn't think it would take me a long time to put together, but it actually did. And I was actually kind of confused because I don't like reading directions. I like to just go in, put things together like a puzzle and just figure it out. So there's like a couple of things missing, like my mic is missing, so I'm hoping you guys can hear me, but I'm not like a quiet voice, so I'm pretty sure you can. Um, but that was another procrastination that tried to sneak up today and basically be like, no, 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 don't do it today, don't do it today, you can put it off. Do it on the day when you have more time. Don't do it right before work, do it on the day when you have more time. But I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I am not doing that at all. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna go on here I'm just gonna do it. There is nothing you could do but to do it and it is what it is. If it comes out great, awesome. If it doesn't, I'll learn for next time and I'll do better. So um, I just wanna say thank you guys for going on this journey with me for my new vlog and podcast. It will be a podcast too and it's called Undeniably Nikki and it's just me being me and giving my take on things that are important to me or things that I'm interested in. You know, there's really no format right now. Some days you may come on here and it's literally all celebrity gossip. And there may be some days you come on here and it's literally a mush fest because <laughs> I'm such a sentimental sap and I love to just like 
I don't know. I just love uplifting words and things like that. So who knows? I just, I just know that I'm excited. I'm excited for this journey. And I'm so excited that you guys are here with me. So, speaking of, let's talk a little celebrity gossip. We got to talk about the baby. That's right, the baby, the rapper, the grown man whose name is the baby, who tends to seem like he's acting like a bit of a baby every single time we hear about him in the news. Now, this one is a tough one for me, mainly because I like the baby. I like his songs. I love them. Like, they just get you pumped. They're like, they're like the songs that you like with your friends and you're like at a party or in the club and you just like, eh, eh, eh. No cap. Like, I love it. But what I don't love, and I'm going to speak on it, this man has a problem with putting his hands on people. Like, this has been going on, I feel like, since the summer. We've been hearing about the baby putting his hands on people, summer 2019. We're now in January 2020. And the latest incident... He's had, let me talk about some of the incidents he's had. He's had incidents where he goes into a crowd in the club or a concert where he's performing and someone touches him and he decides to throw hands. Like, you're in a crowd. Like, what do you expect? Someone's going to accidentally touch you or if not accidentally touch you, someone's going to feel that they have the authority to touch you. Not saying that they do, but come on, dude. Like, you're throwing hands. You got your bodyguard throwing hands, especially when there's instances where it's been women. Like, I don't even understand that. So let's talk about the latest instance. Um, he basically just got in trouble putting his hands on a hotel employee. Now, this was in LA, and you see on the surveillance video, like, they're walking into the hotel, and then the employee, like, the baby literally, like, shoves this guy up against a wall, and he's, like, hemming him up. Now, I don't know what happened. I can't see. I mean, I can see everything, but I can't hear. So I don't know what led up to it. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt that, you know, maybe something was said. Well, now I know. The baby spoke out about it. And he basically said that this guy asked for a photo or something. And he was telling the guy, no, you can't do that. I'm here with my daughter and you're putting us in jeopardy by if you were to post the photo of us. But see, my thing is, so even if this guy went ahead and took the photo without his permission after he said, don't do it, like, that's jacked up. We all know that is. But people do this stuff. Like, dude, you're at a point in your life where you can be so big and you could do so well. Like, I know you have a good heart, too, because you show, you've shown you have a good heart. You know, there's been cameras catching you do, like, really nice things, like, buying this woman who came up to you, you know, telling her, telling you her issues and you like buying her and her son some clothes and stuff. But I just feel like there comes a point where the baby needs to go to the anger management. Like I need to figure out, you need to go and you need to figure out what your triggers are and you need to figure out how you can deal with it. Because the fact that any little instance gets you to this point where you literally are popping off and you're putting your hands on people is crazy to me. Like you are in such a good position. You are literally living your dreams and doing things that people wish they can do. And I don't want to see you mess it up over something so silly. It's so silly. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you have security so I'm pretty sure if people would have came down to the hotel, like, you and your daughter could have been okay. Um, but, you know, I understand. That's a real fear for a parent. That's a real fear. There's a real, you know, you just want to make sure your daughter's safe. But, yo, dude, like, you need to get it together. Because, honestly, your actions are starting to me affect me and me wanting to listen to your music. Because it's just been too many instances where you put your hands on people. And women, like women. Um, and I just got a huge problem with that. But like I said, like, I like your music. I have nothing against you, but I just feel like we all need to have an honest conversation because I'm reading, like, looking at the blogs and stuff, like Shade Room and looking at the comments, and people are literally like, oh, they're always messing with him. Oh, when are they going to leave him alone? Oh, they're always getting him in trouble. And I'm like, he gets himself in trouble. Like, let's, let's be real. 
he gets himself in trouble. You can't control what people do. The only thing you can control is how you respond. So the baby, like seriously, I wish you nothing but the great success that you deserve because you're very talented. Okay, you guys, I have no clue where I left off because we had a little technical difficulty that happened with the camera. So basically, I think I was just saying like with the, the baby, I just honestly like just need him to, I, I need him to just realize that like don't sweat the small stuff. It's really not that deep. It's not that serious, especially to be like ruining your career. Oh, and I put my glasses on now. Um, especially to be ruining your career. It's just not even worth it. So I really hope you like literally go get some counseling, go to anger management, whatever, to just figure out like what it is that's triggering you and why it keeps triggering you because this is crazy. It's not worth it. Like you have so much going for yourself. So like stop letting these people get on your nerves. Speaking of getting on your nerves, um, the person that's getting on my nerve is Meghan Markle's father, like dude. Like, shut up. <laughs> like, this guy has literally been talking since they got married. And it's not in a way of having your daughters back. Like, be a parent. Have your freaking daughters back. Have your kids back. So, basically, the latest thing that he said, you guys all know how Meghan and Harry um, said that they're going to step back from... Um, the royal duties you know they're still royals but they're gonna lose their titles and i mean i guess they're technically not but harry will always be royal uh royalty um but they're just gonna step back you know and harry basically you know he's doing this for his family he sees the way the british press treats megan which is awful they, like they treat her so horribly and um the racist and they just don't treat her well and you know, he sees that it's affecting his wife and he, I, he also sees that it's going down the same road that it went down with his mother because the thing is that a lot of people don't know is that Princess Diana, yeah, she was loved by Americans, but during her time as the princess in England, they were awful to her. Like the British press was horrible to Diana and they treated her kind of the same way that they're treating Meghan. And um, they honestly didn't really start to love her until she passed. Like, if, if we're going to keep it real. They didn't. Okay, guys. So I'm recording right now on my cell phone because we had another camera issue. I kid you not. I can't make this stuff up. But anyway, whatever. Things happen. That's just what it is. So back to Diana. Um, I was just saying, like, the British press was really awful to her, to her too. And um, I think Harry sees that with Megan that's going down that route. So he wants to protect his family. And honestly, I applaud him for that. Um, that's being a man. That's looking out for your woman. That's looking out for your family. That's protecting what you love. And I applaud him for it. Yeah, it was bold. Yeah, it's, it, it's so bold to walk away from what you've known your entire life, the monarchy, to walk away from being royalty. But let's face it, I mean, he's still going to be royalty. And a lot of people's eyes he's just stepping away from the monarch to do basically so he and Megan can do their own thing and just live their own life and I can't be mad at them for that you know I feel like we all wish we were a little bit more bolder to just do the things that are truly in our heart and um, a lot of times we aren't because we're worried about what people will say or think and so we don't make those bold moves you know um, one of the reasons it has taken me so long to start my vlog slash podcast, whenever I start the podcast, is because, um, you know, fear of people not liking it, fear of what people will think, um, fear of if I can do it by myself. You know, I always feel like, you know, maybe I need someone with me to kind of bounce back off of someone. But you know what? Life's too short. Like, we just all have to, like, just, I don't know, just... Be bold and be brave and just go for it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? No one likes it? Okay. At least I put myself out there. At least I tried, you know? Um, and I want you guys to think that same thing. If there's anything you're going after in your life and you are afraid to go for it, you're afraid to do it, like, think about it. Like, what is really the worst that can happen? You know, um, rejection. Yeah, reject rejection sucks. We all hate it. 
but we're so resilient. We're more resilient than we could ever know or think and we'll be all right. So yeah, we used this Megan and Harry moment where I was literally annoyed with her dad for talking smack about them and it turned into a little inspirational moment. So I am hope it's something you guys could have all used because it was definitely something I could have used for myself at that moment. And, you know, just speaking of, you know, things we can use for ourselves. So I was looking at Instagram this weekend and I saw that Kiki Palmer posted, you know, about like her insecurities and how she's insecure with her skin because she has like acne issues and things like that. Um, and it just got me thinking about just in general, how many of us deal with insecurities on a daily basis and how, yeah, that's a normal part of life, but we really need to like give ourselves some slack and give ourselves some credit. You know, like me, I'm a very secure woman for the most part, but yeah, I have things about my body that I wish I can change. You know, like I love my body. Like, by the way, I love being curvy. I've always loved being, you know, a really thick girl. I've been a really thick girl my entire life, like extra, extra thick. But I love it. Like, I can't picture myself skinny. I just don't see myself that way. But there are things about my body that I wish I could change. You know, like, I wish I had a little less cellulite. Um, I didn't used to have a lot of cellulite, but as I get older, I'm starting to see it. And um, I wish that my tummy was smaller. That's always been, like, a thing with me. Like, most of my weight goes in my tummy, which is kind of annoying. Um, and my ass, which is great. But, um... <laughs> But anyway, um, I just wish my tummy was smaller. And, you know, like I saw one of this, this plus size model that I follow. I love her. Um, I can't think of her name right now, but I love her and I follow her on Instagram. And she posted this weekend and she basically was talking about how, you know, this is the real deal. So she posted and she was sitting down and she was kind of like not sitting up straight. She was just like this. And you could see like her rose. And she was like, this is the real deal. She's like, yes, I'm a model. So I've learned how to angle my body. I've learned how to do different tricks to make myself look smaller than what I am. She's like, but when it's all said and done, this is authentically me. This is my body. And I love me. And you guys should love yourself too. She's like, so every time I see anyone says body goals, she's like, I just want to show, I want you guys to remember this picture. You know, she's like, because... In, in the gist of it all, like Instagram's not real, you know? And I feel like we all look at people on Instagram and we feel like, you know, um, oh, if I just had her stomach, I'm guilty of that. I've done that so many times with like um, to Briar Majors, who's another plus size model. I love her and I just love her figure because she's like juicy and like curvy, but she's got like a smaller tummy and I'm just like, oh, I want to be like juicy and curvy with a smaller tummy, you know? I'm already juicy and curvy. They ain't going nowhere. But <laughs> I always like wish I had a smaller tummy. But like after seeing what this Instagram model had like said today and posted, I was like, oh my gosh, she has such a point. And it's so true. And it's like, we're so hard on ourselves. Like the fact that our bodies are even moving and they're functioning is such a blessing every single day that we wake up with. And yeah, we can always want to improve things and always want to make things better. But in the grand scheme of things, as long as we're healthy and happy and, you know, there's no such thing as perfection. Because what may be perfection to one person may not be perfection to another person. It's all um, subjective. So I just want us all to just give ourselves a little bit more slack. Just love ourselves completely and wholly because we deserve that. You know what I'm saying? Especially like moms. Moms, you're like badasses. Like seriously, all my friends who are moms, I literally, I, I bow down. I really do. Um, because I, I just don't know where you guys find the strength. I don't know where you find the energy. I don't have kids. I work about, you know, like I said, 10 to 12 hours a day. When I come home, I'm like, I feel depleted. I have like nothing left to give. And... <laughs> My mom was a single mom and I just remember how she was and like she would come home and she'd be so tired. And then me and my sister would literally immediately just want to be in her face as soon as she gets home. Like she couldn't even go to the bathroom. We're like in the bathroom talking to her like while she's using the restroom. And I just, the, the fact that your body goes through that, like you carry a baby, you deliver a baby 
and you heal from it. And then you just literally have no sleep for like 18 years because <laughs> that's how long you have your kid in your house or even longer. Um, I just really want my mom friends, I want all moms to really give themselves some credit and give themselves a little slack because they deserve it. And you guys are freaking superwomen. Like you're, a, you're superwomen, you're rock stars. And sure, the abs may not be, you know, as eight packy as they used to be. Maybe they're a little bit more like two pack. That's all right. You know what? It's okay. Because that body delivered a baby. That body carried a baby for almost 10 months and kept a baby safe. Nine months. You, we all know it's nine months, but it's really closer to 10 months. And kept a baby safe. So that should be enough to be like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm going to bounce back when I'm supposed to bounce back. And for now, I'm just going to enjoy life and be me and eat the damn cheesecake. You guys, you want a piece of cheesecake? Just eat the cheesecake. Like, life is too short to be depriving ourselves. Like, seriously, I can't. Um, but I digress. So I just want to say like, love yourselves, love each other, love humanity, and uh, just give yourself some slack because you deserve it. We all deserve it. There's no such thing as a perfect body. Um, there's no such thing as anything being perfect. And you are perfect and uniquely yourself. Like our flaws are part of us and because they're a part of us, they're beautiful and they make us, they add to us. So just embrace it a little bit more, you know? Like I said, I've always wanted a smaller tummy, but I embrace this tummy because it's a functioning, working tummy. Um, and I could be sick and I'm not. I'm healthy. I'm strong. You know what? That's it. I'm not going to keep going on this tangent because I could just keep getting, going and going and being mushy and... Uh, I don't want to do that. It's only the first episode. I don't want to keep you guys too long, but I promise once we do more of the vlog, once I do more episodes, it'll definitely be put together better where you won't have the camera issues. We won't have the technical difficulties. Things will be a whole lot better. Uh, but for now, I hope you have liked the first episode of Undeniably Nikki. I know I kind of just wrapped suddenly after the mush fest and it's kind of weird. But honestly, I literally have to leave the house because I got to go to work. Um, so I just want to say um, I'm excited about this journey. I'm excited for everyone who's going to be on it with me. This is only the first episode. I had a couple of things go wrong, but it is what it is. Like in the grand scheme of things, it's still a su success and things came out great. I got my points across. I got some things out. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I really don't even want to wrap it up. Like, but... I really have to because it's literally 1230. So I literally have to get out the house now so I can get to work on time. But I've enjoyed this time with you guys. And uh, yeah, friends of mine, text me and let me know topics you want to discuss. And maybe I can talk about it on the vlog. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching me be undeniably Nikki.